So good afternoon, everyone. This is Daniel Klimek. I'm editor at the Embo Journal, covering cancer and metabolism, among other subjects. And I'm happy to talk today to Eric Sahai from the Francis Crick Institute in London, who is one of the co-organizers of the Keystone meeting, uh, Tumor Metabolism and the Microenvironment, to be held from January 25th onwards. So this is soon. Um, Eric, thank you for taking the time, despite the busy turn of the year. Yeah, so, well, uh, hi, Daniel. It's uh, uh, great, to, great to see you again. And yeah, we're very much looking forward to this meeting that's going to kick off in a couple of weeks' time, and I'm happy to talk about it today. Right. So I was like, you know, when preparing for the interview, I was thinking back into the meetings I attended over the last years, and there, there had been a, a good number of excellent Keystone meetings, either in the area of, you know, tumor microenvironment, and, and we met at some of them, or in cancer metabolism. Um, but this one is really bringing together these two mature and strong fields. So I was really curious about what is your motivation behind and what's the idea of, in particular, for this meeting to come up? Well, yeah, I mean, thinking about it from somebody who's been in the tumor microenvironment field, I think when we sort of were getting to grips with this maybe a decade or two ago, it was thinking about growth factors and soluble factors as the main kind of mechanisms of communication between cancer cells and their, you know, local environment. But actually, you know, if one sort of just thinks that, you know, the tumor microenvironment is basically everything outside the plasma membrane of the, the cancer cell, well, then obviously it sort of strikes you that the, the metabolic environment is, you know, uh, absolutely kind of crucial to that in, in determining, you know, how the cancer cell is likely to behave. And, you know, it's been sort of striking to watch from a distance how the tumor metabolism field has you know progressed over the past couple of decades and it really felt that you know the time was right to sort of mm. uh bring these things together now and clearly you know from you know the great abstracts we've got there's already quite a few people working on this interconnectivity mm. yeah that makes a lot of sense to me you know from journal perspective we we do get a broad variety of different papers and certainly both of these areas have been particularly strong over the last years. So I have a note here, you know, it's kind of, to me as a cancer, former cancer researcher, the, the, one of the key questions in the field, I guess, is what, who is in the driver's seat, right? So, and what are the cellular hierarchies uh, uh, which are relevant? And, and, you know, remarkably both the, the matrix biology and also the metabolism recently have been understood to be upstream of cell proliferation, much against the dogma in the field, right? And now there's even exciting work interconnecting these two, right? So we learned that extracellular metabolites can, uh, can tweak uh, ECM remodeling and vice versa. The matrix can guide and instruct uh, cellular, so metabolic pathways. So what's your take on this interface and uh, who do you think is the, the chicken and who the egg in that play? So I, I think that's that's a, a great and very sort of perceptive question. As you you know allude to, there's a lot of work saying that you know actually you know both the metabolic environment and the kind of the tumor microenvironment in terms of its physical characteristics and also its growth factor milieu can really uh, determine you know the behavior of you know cancer cells. And then the question is, well, you know who's who's driving who? You know, cancer is clearly a disease that you know. Uh, you know, it's initiating events of the genetic changes within the cancer cells, but then it in, kind of starts this uh, kind of very kind of complex set of interactions. And I think really trying to get to the bottom of this is is going to be really critical because mm. there are lots of attractive things one might want to target both in terms of kind of you know, more conventional tumor microenvironment sort of crosstalk, but also metabolic crosstalk. But I think we've seen time and time again that when you kind of block one you know angle or, or one sort of pathway because it's such an interconnected network, uh, you kind of, yeah, that's coming. Mm. yeah, something else kind of compensates and you end up in a kind of a nightmare of unintended kind of consequences. Mm. But with all the kind of, you know, really big sort of, you know, sort of, uh, you know, omic and sort of systems approaches to now, you know, studying, you know, these networks, I think it's a really exciting time to really try to identify, you know, the most kind of critical nodes, as it were, that you really want to play with that'll have mm. the maximal impact in terms of, you know, skewing the you know, behavior of the cancer cells to make them, you know, less aggressive or to eliminate them. Mm. So it's, this, is, uh, this is the crux and the, the, the challenge, right? To find the, 
decisive component of this uh, interconnected pathways. Yeah. So maybe more to the to the um, just the very program, right? So I was looking through the speakers, and it's really the who is who of both fields. It's it's excellent uh, experts. So, um, but what is what was the idea for the session? So I was looking through them, and it, it seemed they were like by tissue. Is that is that the the concept? And also each of them mixing the metabolism and stroma researcher? Yeah, so um, first of all, I think I should you know, uh, pay, a, pay a great deal of credit to you know, my co-organizers, Johanna Joyce and uh, Alec Kimmelman. Uh, you know, they've really sort of been fantastic in you know, pulling this together and you know, uh, it's uh, yeah, really been a, a team effort. Um, but I think you, know, you, you sort of highlight you know, a couple of things. One is you know, kind of in each of the, the days we, we try to have, you know, uh, you know, a bit of a, a, a mixing of, you know, uh, what might be considered the, the two sort of, you know, uh, different originating fields really to try to stimulate that creative dynamic. So that was, you know, clearly, you know, an intentional decision. Uh, then, you know, in terms of, you know, how do you take this sort of, you know, vast array of really exciting ideas and sort of distill them a little bit more uh, thematically? Uh, in a couple of cases, you know, you're right, we've tried to do this sort of thinking about, you know, an organ as, as being the focus. Um, mm -hmm. So we've got, you know, a session on, you know, the uh, sort of you know, the environment of the, the central nervous system, uh, both looking at brain metastasis, but also brain tumors themselves. We've got one on the, the pancreas, which is, uh, you know, been a, a, a source of kind of great, uh, you know, research in the tumor microenvironment because you know, it's sort of, as a minority of cancer cells, um, which you know has really put it at the forefront of that that area of research. So, so that explains you know a couple of them. Others are a little bit more sort of you know broader in their scope, where we're just trying to think about you know metabolic uh, dependencies, and that's kind of cutting across cancer and organ types. So I guess we will agree that these are exciting times because we witnessed uh, major. Uh, uh, technology advances over the last years. We have very strong uh, and, and impressive uh, single cell sequencing data to resolve both a tumor and stroma heterogeneity. We, uh, there was exciting work on uh, mass spectrometry based tissue scanning to probably revise patient stratification. And then from the metabolomics, we can even in vivo trace uh, metabolites and their fluxes in order to revise therapy, hopefully, and, and adjust it, make it better. Um, so, but from your preview into the content of the conference, uh, what do you think are the key methodologies to enhance cancer research over the years to come? So I think one of the things that I'm really excited about is, you know, the uh, kind of much greater, you know, uh, spatial uh, resolution and description we can get of, you know, the, the tumor microenvironment. So all these sort of, you know, highly multiplex sort of spatially resolved techniques and then integrating them with the kind of single cell tra transcriptomics and spatial transcriptomics. So I think mm. this is a, you know, a really interesting area because one thing, you know, I would love to be able to understand is, you know, why do kind of tumors, you know, have the, the cellular and matrix patterns that they do when you look at them down a microscope, you know, clearly it tells us something about the tumor. That's why pathologists, you know, have a, have a job and have a have a role to play. Mm. Um, so you know that's an area of burgeoning technology that I'm really interested in. But kind of coming back to the, the topic of the meeting, you know, I would love to see that kind of overly overlaid or sort of you know um, kind of cross referenced with you know the metabolic environment. Uh, so mm. starting to get to grips with you know uh, you know spatially resolved you know metabolomic analysis, and this is something yeah. that's really kind of coming online and we've got, you know, sessions on kind of compartmentalization and, you know, uh, improved imaging methodologies are really starting to give us insights into that. It probably it's fair to say that part of what makes, I mean, we are all within this, at this point, at this point, interdisciplinarity is, is immense. And so we have to think about how to efficiently cross communicate and share our thoughts. And certainly this is a challenge if we think about, you know, basic researcher versus clinician and uh, uh, wet lab person versus uh, bioinformatician. So how, how can we facilitate this changing perspectives and openness, which hopefully will be fruitful at the meeting? Well, I, I think the, the first thing is kind of, you know, just kind of getting to know each other. Um, and also, you know, 
I sort of just encourage people not to sort of be, you know, um, sort of, you know, afraid or, or daunted. I think, you know, every field comes with its own sort of, you know, jargon and, you know, acronyms that, you know, take a little bit of time to, to get your head around. But I think um, one is, you know, don't be sort of, you know, overwhelmed sort of by that, you know, you, you will get to grips with it, you know. Um, and the other, I think, you know, as, you know, sort of, perhaps people who've been in the field a little bit longer, we need to occasionally, you know, sort of give ourselves a little bit of a check and go, actually, you know, do we really need to, you know, have all this jargon? Can we actually, you know, bring mm. exciting kind of concepts to the fore in a way that, uh, you know, is a bit easier to communicate? So I think for, you know, newer people who are looking to kind of cross, a, you know, disciplines, uh, you know, just, you know, jump in, you know, it'll be exciting and, you know, you, you'll get to grips yeah. with it. And, for those of us, you know, uh, who've been in it a bit longer, perhaps uh, there are some lessons about keeping it simple. Yeah, that's usually, you know, I'm at a broader scope journal, so that's usually what we uh, encourage that that you know to, to drop some of the very de very uh, detailed terminology might uh, might be helpful when reaching out to to broader broader audience. It's clear that uh, due to the pandemic, we will not be able to meet in person. Um, we would have loved to discuss science directly and, and maybe go for skiing afterwards. We cannot, but um, we will have this virtual format and, uh, and maybe there are even advantages and, and, and positive aspects of this format. So I, I was curious about your view and also if you could detail maybe some of the features we, we will find and um, how attendees can take best advantage of of the program yes well i think you know um as you as you say this will be a virtual meeting and i have to give you know credit to you know all the the, the keystone team who've been working very hard you know in literally the last sort of you know 10 months to you know turn around you know their uh you know um meeting organization to you know adapt to the kind of current times um and you know whilst you know, it'll be different hopefully you know it'll be you know uh you know a very stimulating experience and it you know i think it could have some positives i think you know uh you know the virtual format is uh, a sort of a, a leveler of the playing field in terms of you know the geography and the access of you know uh different researchers to uh you know go to the meetings um which i think you know is is a very much a, you know a good thing uh and mm. that you know people can you know join the meetings where Perhaps you know they might have been in middle-income or lower-income countries. Mm. Uh, that, you know, so hurdles, the hurdles might be lower, yeah. Absolutely. So I think that you know is you know uh, you know uh, a great uh, you know sort of uh, strength and a, you know a benefit of this way of doing things. And hopefully you know in you know a year or two's time when the world is uh, able to mix a bit more freely, we can still retain some of those you know features. Mm. Um, and then I think you know another thing that I've you know noticed and I'm sure will be a, you know, a feature uh, of this meeting is that um, the sort of slightly scary experience of, you know, walking up to the microphone and, you know, uh, you know uh, asking your question to the, you know, the big shot in the field or whatever mm. is actually kind of, you know, taken away by the virtual format because, you know, you can yeah. type it in and then, the, you know, so this will work, yeah. chair, um, you know, yeah. reads it out. So hopefully that will lead to kind of, you know, a, a wider kind of degree of, uh, Mm. engagement from you know the more you know um early career researchers who after all you know will be the future of you know uh all the fields yeah uh, no i agree this should be really integrative and and in the end we are we are curious about uh, each of the participants thoughts and if they if they can more equally being brought up in the in the chat that will that will be beneficial yeah, how about the poster sessions? How will they work? Yeah, so you know, obviously, you know, posters at a virtual meeting are, you know, uh, you know, a, a new thing to get our, our heads around. Um, but I think, you know, uh, there's lots of innovative things that, you know, Keystone are working on. Uh, so in a sense, everybody can do, you know, a flash talk, as it were. You can, uh, you know, uh, pre-record a, you know, a short clip to of you talking about your poster, uh, which should, you know, help to make it sort of engaging and sort of uh, accessible for, you know, all the... Mm different uh, participants and there's also you know uh, an option to kind of you know uh, kind of virtually kind of move into little breakout rooms for sort of you know more focused you know discussions you know with mm. uh, with the poster presenters uh, and hopefully you know that will lead to you know the uh, the new uh, collaborations that will you know drive the field forward over over the next few years 
Well, Eric, thanks so much for being available. And um, I guess we are all excited to, to join in for the meeting and get the latest on cutting edge cancer research. Yeah, I mean, I'm very much looking forward to it. Thank you for, uh, you know, taking your time out to you know, discuss it. And uh, just to everybody out there, you know, uh, really you know, welcome you to join. Well, thanks so much. See you there. Thanks. Bye. Bye there.